All right, everyone, we're here with John from Duran Duran. John, how you doing? I'm good. Thank you for taking the time. As you can hear, hopefully, now Rogers is out there rocking, but we're going to talk about bases real quick with John while he has the time. So, John, talk to us about your uh, main one here, this beautiful one that's shimmering in the, underneath the gel here. I've been using, um, I've been using PC, PV bases for, uh, for about 10 years now. Mm -hmm. The Cirrus, in particular, um, really works for me. Uh, started, yeah, I started using it on the reunion tour, um, yeah, almost 10 years ago, and it's just become my my go-to instrument, you know. And I've I've had a few of them. PV have been very generous in gifting me different models over the last few years that have like uh, I like I like a bass to have a look, mm -hmm. you know. And typically, when we put a new album cycle together, I like to have a, a, a sort of a signature bass I can use. Okay. So this one actually, it was interesting because I, I needed to do a photo shoot for one of the magazines and um, I was in Los Angeles and I didn't have a bass with me and I called Chris at PV and said, what have you got? Have you got a Cirrus? He said, I've only got one, and I'll, uh, but I'll send it to you. And I opened it up and I thought, oh my God, that's disgusting. <laughs> what the hell was he thinking? And I kind of propped it up in the corner of the room and I, and I went away and then I kind of like came back around to it and I was like, wait a minute, hang on a second. And if you're familiar with the, the cover of the new album, Paper Gods, it's got this, it's got this sky. And I thought, actually, hold on, it kind of looks like the sky on the album cover. And ever since that moment, everybody thinks that I've had it, I had it done. It was custom built <laughs> like too. too. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, they update the, they update the electronics every, every, all the time, you know. So, um, but essentially, it's it's been the same feel for the last ten years. I. Um, you know, I try using bigger basses. We've got a big bass here. This is a this is about as big as basses get. Are you happy for me to move on? Yeah. What, well, I wanted to ask you because I know at one point you had a signature bass, but Bernie was telling me that this is is about as off the rack as it gets. So you don't really do anything to it. This no. is if if I were to buy this, you know, this would be pretty similar to what the only you're thing using. We, we, the only thing we did we, did, we added this drop down. Oh, okay. Uh, Recently, um, no, I, I'm I'm not uh, I'm not a gear freak, have to say. You know, I'm not a, you know I'm not super. You know, it doesn't have to that's be not, super customized. It's not a problem. Um, I think we've got what have we got here? Actually, we've got this is this is a this is another Cirrus. This is basically the. Would same. you like the Cirrus compared to the? I know everyone's referring to back and when you guys were first going was with the Arias. Well, I find this the nearest thing okay. to 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 the feel of the Arias, and I actually I I um, I had quite a bit of back and forth with Aria over the last couple of years, mm -hmm. and you know they've been getting back in, they've been really aggressively getting back in the game, and and they uh, they made a couple of instruments for me, and I was hoping that they were going to be a part of this show that I was going to. I I typically start out. At, at the start of a tour, and I think, right, I'm going to use different. I'm going to do what the guitar player does. I'm going to have different, yeah. different instruments for different songs, and and it's going to be this show yeah, of, yeah. of bass. And then I just, I just, I just simplify, simplify, simplify. And in the end, I'm just like, if I can just use the one instrument to get, me, you know. Now we've got a five-string series here because there's no, you know, there's a couple of songs that I actually, yeah, one or two songs depending on, you know, the night. Where I do need a five string, but that's essentially that's essentially what that is. Um, so we'll use use this majority of the night, you would yeah, say. That's, yeah, that's that's, the, main that's guy. the whole show. Yeah, I mean this this one here is the sort of five years old version of that. All right. So if that goes down, that's our number two. Gotcha. And it's not going to throw me because essentially it's the same. You know, it, it feels the same. Um, this is the five string version. I mean, actually talk about customizing, like something I'd been reading about the Beatles in the studio, you know, yeah, and the when they came, us. yeah, and when they came off tour and they just started, they, 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 they took all the, all the, sh the finish off, the, off their instruments, which I guess if you're just a st in the studio, you know, yeah. that's not a problem. So anyway, I, I, I had Have you to, heard anything tonally different? No. No. No, but 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 it, but it but it feels different. Yeah, it feels a little leaner. Okay, it feels a little bit more like a muscle car, you know, Ooh, somehow. Sleek. Yeah, and and it it, it, it feels lighter, you know. I, I'm sure it's not, 
but it just has has a way. It, it, it just because it doesn't have that that sort of heavy gloss yeah. veneer. It just feels a little more lightweight. Anyway, I'm, I'm I'm definitely enjoying playing it more since I since I stripped all the. Uh, and are you playing, uh, what songs specifically maybe you're using the five string, some stuff off Paper Gods, some newer stuff, or is it um, maybe you're playing... No, the only song, there's a song off the Astronaut album called uh, Sunrise, and okay. that's the only song that I use five string on. Um, there was a, there's a song called Only in Dreams, which is on the new album, which we were playing on the tour last year, but we're not playing it, we're not playing it right now. So there's just the one song okay. that we, we use this on. Um, yeah, and this is another five. This was this this is by Say, who are a company in London, and this is a beautiful, beautiful piece of kit. Actually, this is like a it's like a Bentley or something. Yeah, it's, it's like a uh, tuxedo. Very very heavy, very very uh, wide dynamic range. Probably, well, definitely more so than the PVs. I I I hope I don't mean to uh, I don't mean it as a criticism but I think of PV like BMW mm -hmm. you know it's like everyone is like you get this standard it, it, it's nothing you know it's not gonna set you on fire but it's this, it's this consistency mm -hmm. and wherever you are they're fantastic with supporting us and um, this is m a little bit more bespoke there's a l big tonal range to it but almost too much for what's required for what I do in this band mm -hmm. I've tried I was I was going off on a tangent to introduce the 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 the, 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 uh, the music man, which is, you know, like I said, as big an electric bass as you're going to get. Very big, big sound. Yeah. It used to belong to Bernard Edwards, yeah. actually. Yeah, could you take that out and show it to the camera? I know that's. Um, I would love to hear the story how you get acquired this. Well, I think I, I acquired it. I think it was about four o'clock in the morning, actually. Um, <laughs> and, you know, it was right in the middle of a very, uh, very long and probably somewhat inebriated conversation with Bernard. We were working on the power station at the time. And, um, you know, Bernard was my bass idol. I mean, yeah. he, he, he was the first bassist that I really listened to, that I thought, well, I, w I want to play like that. Mm -hmm. And I got to work with him, I got to know him. And, um, and he, 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 he gave me this. And I, and, and, it, 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 supposedly, it's the instrument that he used on Good Times, on the on, on the on the Risque album, and uh, so it's been with me. I've used it on a lot of Duran recordings, and um, and I've got it out on the road with me because I feel like it wants to work. Yeah. And uh, I played on one song, What Are the Chances, which is a song off the new album that doesn't have an electric bass on the recording. It's all is sequence keyboard based. Synth? Yeah, so I had to invent something to play, and it felt like a good opportunity to use this instrument. Thing is, within Duran, there's a lot of sound going on. Yeah. There's a lot of there's a lot of sequences, a lot of electronics firing off at the same time, and I've always had to find a very tight. There's a very tight bandwidth where the where where the bass can yeah. can live. So when I try, you know, say a say an instrument like this, say through an Ampeg rig, it's too big. Mm -hmm. it, it, you know, so I f I found that you know the PVs subsequent to the to the arias the kind of rig that we've got the pv rig mm -hmm. just gives me that sort of pinpoint sound it's narrow and strong without and stepping on nick yeah without getting in the way of, yeah. the, of the other frequencies and what do you hear on just besides being a bigger bass and it's special to you because it's you know given to you by someone that you looked up to as a bass player but tonally what do you hear about it or well, hear from <clears> it? I think it's more about the way you, you you interface with it, the way that you play into it. Mm -hmm. it, it, it it's, it's if you, you know, when you get your groove on it, it kind of yields to you, you know, it's, it's, it, it's like you, you the, it almost feels like it, it softens, in, softens into you. I mean, maybe it's because of the maple neck. These fuckers never yield, <laughs> you know, they are, they are like hard and on it and like there's, you know, so, which is good because if I'm not quite in the mood, it's like they'll play for me. Yeah. Um, but these guys, you, you've got to play. You've got to play to them. Mm -hmm. um, they won't do the job for you. <laughs> and Bernie was telling us that uh, you don't change your strings very often. Well, I got that from Bernard. I mean, actually, um, and Bernard got it from James Jameson. Yeah. And I think that uh, really up until the early 80s, uh, I don't think anybody changed their strings often. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, you know, we got that high twangy sound mm -hmm. that, st that sort of characterized the early 80s when, when, when you know, uh, when it became more, you know, 
fashionable to get have that very bright, mm -hmm. bright sound, and which the string companies jumped on, and and now you know it's something, it, and then it became something um, that players would do. But I've never really, uh, I like the gunk. I don't want a lot of, I don't want a lot of sustain. Um, I like a, I like a dull, I like a dull note, for the most part. Um, so and why is yeah. that? Just because you feel like that's a sound that you've heard yeah, so many times. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I mean, I, I, I don't think any of the players that I that I love, whether it's Jameson or Bernard or Paul McCartney, I don't think any of those guys would have changed their strings yeah, much. No. You know, um, you know, there's something about getting that residue of, of sweat and sl stuff yeah. in the strings that you kind of like quite, I quite like that. Mm -hmm. You know, um, there were definitely times when I. I got into that brighter sound, notorious period, like the late, late, late 80s. But I've just sort of gone back to it. I was really disappointed, actually, because the strings on this, I hadn't, I'd never changed the strings on this. They were oh, Bernard wow. strings for years. Wow. And then somebody did me a favor. One of the guy that was working for me at the time did me a favor and, and cut the strings and, 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 and restrung it for me. Doesn't sound like much of a favor. Oh, no. <laughs> you know, I would never have changed them. But, um, yeah. And uh, on stage, I know that you're running a pretty minimal rig, but mm, you have mm, the mm. PV uh, Mini Mega Amp, and you're running that to the board and the TC Electronic for effects, the, the G-Force unit? Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, the funny thing about that is that actually one of the things we did on this tour is that Bernie, on the side of the stage, he, he, he makes all the changes yeah. for me. You know, so I don't even have to push it. I don't even have to stomp on anything anymore. You know, Bernie's got them. And occasionally, like, Bernie lives in Texas, so we'll do some little gig in London or whatever, and he's not with me. And there it is. Suddenly, it's in front of me, and I'm like, oh, shoot. Now, what was it? It was... Uh, it's like trying to take a plane off. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, again, I keep it fairly, fairly simple. I think I use... I probably use effects on... Maybe seven or eight songs. Okay. And they're pretty basic. Distortion, yeah, you get like a, a so. little bit of delay. Yeah, yeah. A couple of, I mean, you know, songs like Feud or Kill, Wild Boys, they, they have to have mm -hmm. delay. I, I can't play them without delay. Yeah. That's such, a, such an important part of the, of the sound of those, of those lines. Um, and, you know, and I like, I like using the, the octave below. I like adding that sometimes. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, keep it simple and... Uh, you know, and there's enough, to, there's enough to work with, you know. It never gets boring, you know. It's like, it's interesting because, uh, you know, really in the last few years, we've kind of, we've kind of had a born again, there's yeah. like a born again sense in this band. And uh, we love playing our shit, <laughs> you know. And, and, and I guess there was a time in our late 20s when everybody would say, you know, God, you must get so sick of playing those songs, you know. And we'd be going like, well, not really. You know, there, there are songs. And, and now we're like, we're definitely, you know, we definitely love playing these songs. And, uh, and you know, you get to do a tour like this and, 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 and it's just a, it's sort of an opportunity to grow, you know, because I think we're still, you know, we're still looking for ways to sort of refine what it is that, that we do, you know, and, and, and put the music over in a way that is new and... Um, yeah, I mean, you know, this was an interesting, this was a challenge. It's nice to have an album, new album that we feel excited about, and so we, we can integrate, you know, new, new material into the. Into what do the you think set. about, how does that make you feel when a band like Eagles of Death Metal, on their last album, they yeah. covered Save a Prayer? Yeah, it's like, great. I mean, yeah, it's, yeah, it, 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 it's got to be a cool feeling Definitely. to still feel, yeah, Definitely. to have bands like that yeah. uh, honor you guys yeah. in a way like that. Yeah. yeah, actually, you go into something like that, you hear about it, and you. And you approach the listening of a track like that with great trepidation. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> you know, Sweet. and then you go, oh, they kept the bass line. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. Well, John, I appreciate you taking yeah. the time to talk to us. Yeah. I know you got to go get ready for the show. Everyone, this is Chris Keys for Premier Guitar, another rig rundown. Don't forget to sign up for PG Perks, your all-access pass to exclusive gear giveaways and discounts on PremierGuitar.com.